speaker of this session is Dr. Ehia A. Ismail, Associate Professor of and Head of the Department of the Department of Chemistry, Calcutta University. Dr. Ehia received his PhD from Aligarh Muslim University and postdoc research at National Center for Bioartificial Muscles at Hanyang University, South Korea. His area of research interests include materials chemistry, intelligent polymers, and electroactive polymers. He was he was also worked as associate professor at and head of the department, basic uh, sciences at Al Sharp University, and held several positions, academic and administrative positions there. He is a recipient of Creative Research Initiative Fellowship from Ministry of Science and Technology, South Korea. And he is right now Associate Professor at uh, University of Calicut. With a short introduction, I welcome Dr. Ehia for his presentation. Sir, please. You are muted, Dr. Yahya. Sorry, 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 sorry. Thank you, Dr. Raji, for getting me introduced. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers, especially uh, Professor Pradeep. Uh, he was our uh, kind of, uh, when I was a student in Faru College, uh, he was uh, something like a, a role model in academics. We were all delighted to see Pr Professor Pradeep at that time. Then, anyway, I am uh, especially uh, uh, I feel very happy that uh, Faro College is inviting me to deliver a talk on uh, artificial muscles. Uh, Faro College had been my birthplace. I was born and brought up in Faro College. I started my schooling from uh, Faro KLP school till uh, BSc uh, final year. Uh, and each and every corner of Faro College is familiar to me. And all my childhood memories are there in Faro College. Uh, and also, uh, I thank uh, the head of the department, Dr. Kavida, and the organizing members for inviting me to deliver a talk on this topic, artificial muscles. Uh, in fact, uh, this is uh, not purely chemistry, but uh, as a chemist, we can do a lot in this particular area. Uh, most of the, I, I'll just um, uh, share my screen. Can you see the screen now? It is just coming. Yeah, it has come. You have to make it full screen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, in fact, in this particular uh, topic, uh, usually the physicists and engineers are uh, doing a lot of work on artificial muscle technology. Uh, but as a chemist, we can uh, really contribute to a lot of things because uh, material properties are very important in designing uh, any new material, any new technology. Uh, so uh, my lecture uh, is uh, divided into mainly three areas. Uh, uh, first part, I'll discuss about the natural muscles and then artificial uh, muscle material focus, basic concepts of materials used in artificial muscle technology, and some technologies uh, that we for fiber uh, fabrication of fibers and other things, and then to discuss some result, and then moving into the bioartificial muscles and biomimetic properties, what are the materials needed for uh, developing bioartificial muscles, uh, and uh, with some experimental result that we produced in University of Calicut in this area. We just started the experimental work uh, in University of Calicut in this area. With this introduction, I, uh, I, I, I would like to start this uh, topic. Uh, in fact, biological muscles are, uh, you know, uh, it's engines of life. So these muscles consist not only bundles of uh, myofiber. It's, it's a, if you look into the uh, our biological muscles, uh, it consists of large number of bundles of cells. The smallest unit that you look into this one, not the sacromere, but when you look into uh, the uh, uh, myofibril, 
it, its dimension is around uh, 1000 uh, nanometer around 1000 nanometer then that is bundled and then you have uh, this bundle my uh, bundles of uh, myofibril constitute the basic unit of natural muscle uh, but uh, it integrate lot of complex blood circular system which deliver fuel the fuel is glucose and oxygen and remove heat and waste uh, and now each muscle fiber containing many myofibrils these are the basic contractile unit of our biological uh, muscle system and these myofibrils are built of chains of sacromeres and that basically sacromeres contains the proteins and other lipid molecules so you have a thin actin and then you have a thick myosin so this is the basic molecule that cause contraction as a result of some triggering of electrical signal controlled by motor neuron. Uh, in the simplest way, biological muscles, in any uh, biological muscle you look into, these are, the, uh, these are the mechanism. So when we try to uh, mimic the biological muscle, uh, we learn from nature and we look into the different types of movement and then try to develop the biomimetic systems. Uh, in many robotic technology, if you look into, they, 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 all these robotic technologies started by trying to understand the nature and trying to understand the type of motion, movement, actuation produced by the nature. And then look into the, then move into uh, the, the, the creation of robotic, uh, robotic materials and robotic uh, uh, devices. So artificial muscle, basically artificial muscle means uh, any material which can respond to movement, which can respond to uh, uh, some stimuli producing some movement. Uh, external stimuli in our biological muscle, as, as I, I mentioned, that we have electrical signal pulse. So uh, similarly, if you have a material which can respond to electrical stimuli, not only electrical stimuli voltage, but you can, uh, there are some material which respond to light, there are some material which respond to temperature, there are some materials which respond to the change in chemical environment, and there are some materials which respond to magnetic field. So ultimately, as a result of this external stimuli, if they produce certain movement, then they are, if they are capable of uh, making uh, and mimicking nature's mechanism producing movement, then such materials are referred to as artificial muscles. So uh, among different materials proposed, the most promising material is, uh, uh, promising materials are different types of polymers. Uh, yeah, in fact, this particular area, in the beginning I mentioned it is not pure chemistry, it is not pure physics, it is not pure engineering, it's a mixture. So be be better we, we can talk this as a, a kind of uh, bionics, so it, it, it integrates chemistry, materials, mathematics, biology, medicine, electronics, everything. So as a uh, chemist, we look into the type of material, uh, the most important material put forward for fabrication of artificial muscles are electroactive polymers. So electroactive polymers uses different types of stimuli, different types of uh, stimuli use some, some electroactive polymers use electrostatic forces, then electrostriction, ion insertion, then molecular conformational changes, etc. for its actuation. I'll just give you some slides video, then that will, that will help you to understand what is, uh, what is the meaning of an artificial muscle. So, if you look into different types of material, they respond to different types of stimuli and then produce different types of movement. So the, the one with all these materials are made by electroactive polymers, uh, made from electroactive polymers. And then you have some other type of material. Uh, they are not exactly electroactive polymers, uh, but some electrostrictive materials and then uh, uh, polymer metal composites, uh, such kind of materials. Uh, if you look at the first slide, you find a lot of wires to uh, produce movement. But in the second one, you find only two wires. So the second one is more close to our biological system because brain um, sending the signal to the muscle and receiving back the sensing signal through only two connecting wires, through neurons. 
we don't in the present day robotic technology you find large number of wires and connectivities but if you really want to mimic the system mimic the our life then we look into the material which can respond to exactly similar to our biological muscle means we don't want large number of connecting wires what are the type of materials uh, among our eaps uh, one type of material is electro elastomers then electrostrictive polymers then you have uh, therm thermosensitive polymers carbon nanotubes there are a lot of carbon nanotube actuators then ionic gels are there then ipmc uh, ionic polymer metal composite and then conducting polymers my this particular lecture is mainly focused on conducting primary emphasis on conducting polymer based uh, artificial muscles or actuators so uh, this eap is uh, uh, as i mentioned uh, use different types of stimuli uh, generally they are classified into uh, two types one is the field activated electroactive polymers or they are referred to as electronic electroactive polymers they use uh, electric field or coulomb force to provide to come out with some kind of movement driven by coulomb interaction so coulomb force this can be operated in dry state this is the important advantage of field activated electroactive polymers for artificial muscles is that they can be used in the dry state they don't need any electrolyte for their movement uh, they include uh, in fact usually they include electro uh, dielectric elastomers and then electrostrictive restrictive graft polymers electro viscoelastic polymers uh, they have that they have high mechanical energy density and the big the, the greatest disadvantage of this material is that if you want to make any kind of movement they require very high voltage of around more than 50 60 volt up to 100 volt certain material requires so this is the one of the biggest disadvantages then the other is the ionic uh, ionic uh, electroactive polymers uh, they are uh, ionically or electronically activated uh, through the diffusion mainly through the diffusion of ions they require certain electrolyte for their operation the major advantage of this material is that they they work in a very low op they have they need a very low operational voltage some of the uh, ionic pol polymers electroactive polymers like conducting polymers they need only 0.1 volt very low voltage for their operation the disadvantage is the they uh, their uh, response time the response speed is very slow uh, unlike uh, field uh, dielectric elastomers when you when you apply around uh, 100 volt you know that they will like they will move like within a short within one second they they, they start making movement but in uh, ionic uh, eaps they move very slowly they, uh, uh, so the examples of uh, these two classes i mentioned before dielectric dielectric elastomers uh, then uh, ferroelectric polymers also comes in this electronic eap some liquid crystal elastomers uh, ionic eaps uh, carbon nanotubes are included under ionic eaps because that requires electrolyte for its operation then electro rheological fluids are there uh, ionic polymer metal composites are there i'll just give some uh, some insight into uh, uh, some of these materials mentioned uh, the example of uh, dielectric elastomers mainly in, uh, acrylic and silicones and polymethyl methyl acrylate based electrostrictive polymers they uh, by applying uh, a voltage of around 50 to 100 volt they start creating uh, movement uh, in a, in the electric field this elastomers expand in a plane of the electrode amplifying the normal compression due to the electrostatic charges in the electrode this is the mechanism in dielectric elastomers uh, then ionic polymer metal composite uh, we have uh, a, it's you have a base ionomer base polymer that provide the channels for cation to move in a fixed network of negative ions then these mobile cations from the anode are responsible for bending actuation not only bending you most the, the video that i shown it shows a bending actuation but at the same time they can also produce linear actuation but bending actuation in this case is more visible in ipmc ipmc based material uh, they consist of a polymer matrix and is coated 
on the outer surface with a platinum or you can have gold or silver like that coating aids the distribution of the voltage over the surface they can be made into sheets and can be cut into different shapes and size as needed uh, usually nafion because the dupont uh, uh, produce i mean product nafion was first used for producing the uh, ipmc based actuator usually composed of perfluorinated ion exchange membrane then flamion from asahi glass uh, they produce their, their brand name is flamion nafion is the brand name from dupont uh, cations are bigger cations two smaller cations are used and the metal coating is from platinum or gold uh, and this uh, is a schematic representation uh, of uh, the mechanism uh, in which the ionic polymer uh, started showing movement the other is uh, ionic gels uh, simple example is pva in a dmso solvent polyacrylate nitrile with conductive fibers uh, I think some 15 years ago, uh, Professor Asada from Japan, they, uh, there was a paper in Science in 2005, around 2005 or six. So they produced a uh, self-walking ionic gel. Uh, those videos are available in the internet. Uh, then applications of voltage causes movement of H plus ions in and out of the gel. So if there is a, a volume variation, that means there is a uh, actuation. Uh, then the third one is the fourth one is the carbon nanotube uh, there are different mechanism put forward for carbon nanotube uh, one of the pioneer in carbon nanotube research actuation in art, carbon nanotube artificial muscles is uh, professor uh, ray h bowman in utd uh, mcdermid uh, nanotech institute is the director of so he was the first one to produce uh, uh, carbon nanotube based artificial muscle uh, these are the, the most prominent uh, uh, mechanism put forward is the non faradaic uh, charge discharging mechanism uh, but some other groups are also arguing that there are faradaic processes taking place in means there are uh, redox reactions taking place in carbon nanotube that causes uh, actuation but the prominent uh, mechanism put forward for the actuation of cnts are uh, double layer charging and discharging and uh, the first paper appeared in again in 2005 in uh, uh, science on carbon nanotube actuators now the other type of material is uh, molecular actuators uh, or this can be visualized as a kind of it's a, an extension of the molecular motors 2016 nobel prize was for in chemistry was for the discovery of molecular motors so here in molecular motors uh, the the, the uh, the figure that i have shown here is uh, at the at the center you you have a calyx arene uh, what the researchers from mit did uh, in early i think 10 years before uh, what they did uh, calyx arene itself cannot make any kind of movement they attached quarter thiophene they tried to polymerize thiophene but uh, they could not get a bigger thiophene they could not attach a big Uh, polyethylene molecules into calyx arene unit but both the sides they used four molecules of uh, four molecules of uh, thiophene and then they polymerized it so ultimately in between two calyx arene unit you have eight monomers of uh, poly polythiophene attached so polythiophene is again a, a conducting polymer and then they applied electric field then they start making movement how it's like a, a calyx arene started making a movement like a hinge so it it its role is like a hinge so it started making movement so this paper is published in jax and the other uh, is uh, these type of molecules are very well known because they are photoactive uh, uh, azobenzene molecules so when you apply photons then they produce movement because of the conformational change Uh, my major uh, discussion will be based on conducting polymer based artificial muscle uh, uh, these are the most promising the, the reason is that these are the only material which can among all the material that i discussed now conducting polymers are the only material that can really uh, mimic the biological functions and i will come to the that part later uh, and then this material require very low operational voltage they work 
0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0.2, etc. voltage they produce. Uh, voltage, the, the very good stress and strain they can produce, good stress and strain. Uh, the uh, conducting polymer, you, you, you have uh, extensive uh, pi electron delocalization. Uh, they can be doped, uh, either they can be P-doped or N-doped. Uh, and after doping, they become conducting. If you can de-dope it, uh, the charge carriers uh, is removed from the uh, polymer backbone and then that becomes insulator. Again, you can make it to a conducting state. You can tune its conductivity. Uh, uh, the discovery of conducting polymers uh, received, you know, that uh, three uh, scientists, uh, uh, Alan J. McDermott, Alan McDermott, and then Hideki Shirakawa and Alan Heger, uh, both of these two, uh, I mean, Alan McDermott and Hideki Shirakawa, they are a chemist and uh, Alan Heger was a physicist. So uh, this uh, discovery opened a new era of plastic electronics. So most of the focus on conducting polymer based research was on electronic application where the uh, composition remains constant. They, uh, so, uh, no, 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 uh, sorry. Uh, in, in those application, uh, the material all type of conducting polymer material as considered as a dry material. So that's why uh, you, you, when you browse on conducting polymers, you get large number of papers, lot of uh, uh, applications. All those applications are based on uh, cons by considering conducting polymers as dry material. So you have uh, different types of application in electronics. Uh, the, the most important aspects of this material is that they have an extended pi electron conjugation and uh, uh, they can be uh, tuned, their electrical conductivity can be tuned anywhere between insulator and conductor. You can tune it. If you want, a, if you want around a conductivity 10 to the power minus 8, you can make a polyaniline of 10 to the power minus 8. If you want a polyaniline of 10 to the power minus 2, you can make a polyaniline of 10 to the power minus 2. If you want to make a polyaniline of conductivity 10 to the power to, uh, you can make it because the specific conductivity, uh, not like metals, uh, they, they can be tuned anywhere between insulators and metals. Uh, that's why they are termed as synthetic metals. Uh, I just skip all these things. Doping, you can do different types of doping, chemical doping, electrochemical doping, radiation doping, and then doping by acid-based chemistry. Ultimately, uh, after doping, what you get is uh, a radical cation. So in the doped state, it, the doping is, don't confuse with uh, doping in inorganic uh, semiconductors. Here, the dopant concentration can extend up to even 50% of the total ma mass of this polymer. So you have the ba basic polymer chain. So along the polymer chain, the counter ions are there. If suppose, for example, if I take polyaniline, so you have a long chain of polyaniline uh, with extended pi electron conjugation. And then when you dope it with some uh, protonic acid, uh, then H plus ions are getting doped. Once it is doped, then soliton, the solitons in conducting polymers in polyaniline, it is referred to as polaron. It's a, a electron trapped in a lattice polarization. So uh, when you apply potential, the polarization along with the lat, uh, this uh, quasi particle polaron will move uh, in a direction of the electric field and then conduct electricity. Uh, uh, and uh, this is the simple uh, acid-based chemistry. And then when you remove, you use some uh, base, uh, sodium hydroxide or ammonium hydroxide, then all these H plus ions are getting removed from the polymer backbone and then you will get the insulating, poly, uh, conduct, insulating polymer. Again, you want, you can change the concentration of all these uh, ions and then you can tune this conductivity. And then we have electrochemical doping, radiation dopings are reported. Uh, anyway, uh, our, uh, these are the applications usually focused on the research on conducting polymers, rechargeable batteries, solar cells, optical storage, electrochromic display devices, then LEDs, all these material, they are referred to, except batteries, uh, they are referred to as uh, uh, dry material. In some biosensors and ion sensors, and then batteries and supercapacitors, uh, the, the science is different. The, the, the mechanism is different. The explanation is different. Uh, now, uh, what will happen uh, in those applications, in those applications, uh, physics dominates and engineering aspects dominates. But when we look into the chemistry of these materials, they are 
considered as a soft, wet, and non-stoichiometric giant non-stoichiometry you can create in conducting polymers uh, by controlling the dopant level. So the composition can be continuous, continuously varied. So they are multifunctional and biomimicking electrochemical devices. So this application can be tuned to make conducting polymer based artificial muscle. So there is a giant non stoichiometry They mimic biological cell because conducting polymer, you have ions, you have water molecules, you have electrical signal. In biological system, we have, we need ions, we need water molecules, uh, and we need electrical signal. Uh, and then there is an exchange of water in and out of the biological cell. The, in the same way, conducting polymer also function. So that start creating movement as a result of insertion of ions due to oxidation or reduction taking place in conducting polymer chain. Every one step, you can remove one electron each from each step. So at the same time, to counterbalance the charge, ions are coming into the polymer matrix. In the reverse, when, you, when, the, when it is getting reduced, again, there are two possibilities to counterbalance the charge. Sometimes the, the trapped ions will move out or the other ions from electrolyte comes into the polymer matrix. Uh, these are the mechanisms. Uh, in linear, uh, in bending motion, we can really uh, look into the uh, movement. Uh, we, can, we can take a photograph. But in the case of linear uh, motion, sometimes the, the movement will be at nano or micro level. So in that case, we use some kind of, uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, lever arm, muscle lever arm. The tip will send, it's, it, it is not exactly like AFM, AFM, uh, not exactly like AFM tip, but it's another, we call it as a muscle lever arm. So the tip of this muscle lever arm sends the linear strain and, and also the force. Now we move into the uh, biological, bio-artificial muscle uh, systems. Um, uh, although conducting polymers are considered as a gel-like material, uh, there are some kind of brittleness associated with conducting polymer material. If it is not wet, it is slightly brittle. If it is wet, okay, it is well and good. So for bio-artificial muscle system, we may have to hybridize it with some kind of biopolymer. So uh, biopolymers can improve the mechanical strength. Biopolymers can imbibe the water uh, or the solvent molecules, and then uh, able to transport the ions from the electrolyte to the polymer chain, conducting polymer chain. So usually bioartificial muscle systems are uh, fabricated, designed by hybridizing with other polymers, usually with hyd hydrogels, PVA like PVA, kytosin, et cetera. I'm going to give you some experimental result on uh, some kind of microfibers and nanofibers uh, from which we made uh, bio-artificial muscles fibers using conducting polymer. So uh, the, what we did is uh, we have taken uh, kytosin or PVA uh, because they can produce very good mechanical stability and strength. But at the same time, the hydrogels are non-electroactive. Uh, when you hybridize it with the conducting polymer, they, they, produce electro, they, 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 they produce electroactivity. Then they started responding to electrical stimuli, producing linear actuation or bending actuation. So uh, uh, what I'm going to show is about with the result on polyaniline, poly, polypyrrole, and then uh, with the kytosin and PVA. So uh, first technology that we employed is the microfiber fabrication through wet spinning method. So it's very simple method. You can uh, produce, you can prepare a solution of a hydrogel using a syringe pump. You, you, you have to try to find out a suitable coagulating medium and then uh, viscosity of the material should be, uh, you, you, you have to be very careful with the viscosity of the polymer solution. And then uh, you make a, uh, coagulate in a proper coagulation medium using a suitable uh, syringe pump with a proper ra radius. And then after getting this one, if you want, you can 
cross-link it with uh, some like two glutaraldehyde to make it more powerful, more strong, to impart some more strong. And then after that, you you can make a kind of uh, hybridizing with conducting polymer through uh, in situ chemical polymerization. And after that, the fiber will be exactly same as a artificial muscle fiber. Uh, not exactly, but uh, to certain extent, because in terms of actuation, that can produce actuation, both bending or linear actuation. What we did in when I did is the linear actuation with a proper muscle lever arm. Uh, uh, so this is the example of a uh, chitosan microfiber coated with uh, uh, coated with uh, polyanilin. So you have uh, the surface is like uh, uh, it's there, there is a high porosity, enable efficient diffusion of ions. And then inside the hydrogel also, you have a, a polymer chain grown that we studied through them. And then after applying the electrochemical potential, uh, we got a, a initial strain. Electrochemical actuation strain we observed is around 0.4 uh, percentage strain we, we achieved. And at the same time, if you switch the pH, we were able to produce chemical actuation we, are, we were able to produce uh, around a strain of up to average strain of up to four or five percentage between four and five percentage strain we received. Then how to achieve the major focus on such kind of studies was especially for engineers, their major focus is not on understanding the basic science, but how to improve the performance. So how to achieve a high strain, how to overcome the brittleness of conducting polymer actuators. So what we did is that you know from microfiber technology moving towards to nanofiber technology and then through electrospinning. So we are getting more and more fine fiber uh, at the nano level. And then we were able to produce uh, uh, through electrospinning either nanofibrous mat or aligned uh, nanofibrous mat or single one or two combination of one or two nanofibers. And then we hybridize it with conducting polymers. Uh, we did different types of variation, even twisting also we tried with nanofibers. And then one of the challenge uh, was to improve the strain. So we, with polyvinyl alcohol, uh, these are the nanofibrous mat we produced and then coated with conducting polyaniline. And then you see from initially we got 0.4 percent uh, uh, strain. And now this conducting polymer, uh, nanofibrous mat, were able to produce a strain up to 1.8 percentage. And these can be rolled up into any shape so that you know the real actuation strain can be, we, we, can, we can move even up to four or five percent electrochemical actuation strain in nanofibrous mat. And it's very good uh, cycle stability we observed. Uh, we have gone through more than 100, sorry, not no, here what we show is only 120 cycles. Even we have gone to more than 1000 cycles. There is no dissipation of the actuation strain. And then uh, myofibril, in the, uh, in the first introductory remarks, I mentioned that myofibril, it's, it's my diameter is around, uh, it's around uh, uh, thousand nanometer, one micrometer. Is it possible to fabricate an artificial myofibril? So uh, we tried and then we mimic, we were able to produce the motion in this particular uh, material. So, uh, this myofibril, what we did, we take uh, polyurethane and then in the polyurethane, uh, we designed a special electrode because these my, uh, our biological muscles are really uh, aligned, well aligned, well aligned. It is not like uh, random myofibril, random fibers, it is well aligned. So I'll just show you, see this is the myofibril, this is the way in which the myofibrils are uh, arranged. So uh, our task is to you know, align the nanofibers. And then we succeeded in aligning the nanofibers from um, by specially designing an electrode. Uh, and then polyurethane solution was electrospun to get aligned nanofibers. And then we uh, coated with uh, polyaniline. And then we got an actuation strain of around 1.6 percentage. So we started, uh, it started creating movement. And then we, what we do for uh, further, how to mimic the biological system exactly the way in which we want. So 
this biological systems are never uh, made by human technology the the reason is that biological systems uh, are mainly focusing on chemical reaction so mimicking chemical reaction is slightly different for engineers and physicists so uh, the uh, the reason why the real biological muscles cannot be replicated by human made technology is that we don't have a material model system to understand the properties of biological system the material model system the material model system what is the material model system so we argue that among all electroactive materials mentioned only conducting polymers can mimic to certain extent the biological functions so uh, uh, the one of the oldest dream for engineers and robotic engineers that how to produce a multifunctional motor that can sense that can sense the surrounding so you, you just imagine uh, you touch something you know the temperature of uh that material you know some um, uh, the whether you can push that material or not the we our 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 muscles have tactile sensitivity our muscles sense and get the feedback from the same two uh, same connecting wires starting from the brain back to the brain uh, so what is the material model system so uh, this is the one which i mentioned uh biological system needs an aqueous media an electric pulse arriving from the brain and then liberation of calcium ions you see this uh, the, the the top one the red one is the actin and myosin so then the, there is a release of calcium ions inside the sacromere and then chemical reaction hydrolysis is there then conformational changes along natural polymeric chain with the change in sacromere volume then there is an associated water exchange this is what actually happening in biological cell this is also actually happening in all conducting polymer based artificial muscles so conducting polymer based artificial muscles also require all this requirement to make its movement then uh, you might have heard about the proprioception the term sometimes some it's a kind of uh, uh, perception uh, if uh, you, you know people uh doing doing some discus throw uh, or you you take you you take some material in your hand and then start rotating start uh, make rotating it your brain know the relative uh, distance of that particular material from your body your brain know what is the rate of that movement angular movement how does your brain know this so at present the uh, the science uh, we say, the people says that there is no explanation proper explanation that's what it is referred to as a uh, psychological concept still it is referred to proprioception is a, referred to as a psychological concept but uh, based on the concept if we have a material model system to mimic the biological system then we will be able to explain the proprioceptive uh, aspect and then we will be able to design proprioceptive devices also again for that designing the proprioceptive device uh, by properly understanding the biomimetic properties we say that conducting polymers can be used to understand the proprioceptive mechanism how uh, do we do this first thing is to understand the chemistry of life reaction taking place inside the matrix biological cell it's a dense gel these chemical reaction generate the biological function conducting polymer apart from the physics and engineering aspect when you come to the chemistry electrochemistry of conducting polymers these conducting polymers are referred to as dense gel so that require ions that require electric pulse that material as a result of the reaction that material sends back this material does not need lot of connecting wires the same signal the same connectivity that you used to uh, put the actuation signal that can be the same connecting wire will receive back the surrounding condition so the material model system is conducting polymer so after 
understanding this aspect, we would like to classify the actuation in, in a different way, slightly different way. One is the physical actuation and the other is the chemical actuation. So the chemical actuation is more important for designing proprioceptive and biomimetic devices. So this chemical actuation is driven by electric charge. Physical actuation is driven by electric field. So once it is driven by electric charge, it's a Faraday reaction, it's a Faraday, Faraday motor. So you have a, whether it is P-doped or N-doped, the process is, the reaction is driven by electric charge. So we will, uh, we will give into, move into the, some experimental result to verify our argument. So this is the re basic reaction polymer, uh, you have a polymer reaction. Uh, the problem with uh, studying this polymer reaction, all the theories on reaction, rea rate of- Sir, could you, could you please conclude in two minutes? Can okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. We don't have time. Then, uh, so first step to, uh, first step to uh, achieve this uh, material, this, this dream is developing a motor controlling position and movement rate. So what we did is, uh, this is polypyrrole film. So this polypyrrole film, after applying the electric potential, then we monitored the angle. So then the, the previous one, you have a polypyrrole film stick to a, 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 a layer, a, a, a one side tape. Then you have a trilayer actuator. This trilayer actuator, you have a double side tape in both sides you have conducting polymer so during one cycle one polymer one film will act as a counter electrode other will act as a working electrode in the reverse cycle the the previous one will act as uh, working and the first two second one will act as counter electrode and then we try to uh, uh, understand the movement and position uh, the correct angle and then we got uh, some very good similarity so that means they can be used as uh, able to control the position and movement rate. Then the second step is sensing behavior, dual sensing motors. Can artificial muscles sense themselves by working condition? At present, there is no technological parallel existing in this uh, area. So here again, I'll move to the next slide. Different concentration, different mass. We, we tried with different mass and then it is sensed by the potential. So uh, different mass we tried and then different uh, current we tried, different concentration we tried. So this, is, this material is able to sense the surrounding chemical condition, temperature we tried, different temperatures. And then this was able to sense the temperature without any more connectivity with the same connecting wires and then uh, we tried with different materials, like uh, uh, not only polypyrrole, we tried with polyaniline, uh, polyaniline microfiber, silk on silk nanofibrous mat. And so we, this material is able to sense the electrical working condition, chemical working condition and temperature, temperature of the surrounding. So biomimetic artificial muscles work simultaneously as polymeric electrochemical motors then it can act as a mechanical sensor, it can act as a thermal sensor, it can act as a chemical sensor, it can act as an electrical sensor. So allowing these properties allow the conducting polymer to construct proprioceptive tools and robots. And the third step is the theoretical model. Theoretical model uh, is a little bit difficult. Actually, we work, I work with uh, Professor Toribio in Spain in this particular area. Uh, there's, we know that Le Chatelier's principle. This is for equilibrium condition. So Otero's principle says that under constant current, any chemical or physical perturbation of the electrochemical reaction rate will be, there is a shift and then that will be sensed by charge and current. Then uh, the, the reason is uh, the theoretical modeling is a little bit uh, complicated uh, because in, in uh, butler volmer equation, the famous butler volmer equation, there is an activation energy term. So these are energy terms are derived for dilute systems. When you apply to condensed our biological system, these are condensed uh, uh, system, these are polymeric 
long chain molecule there is a you need certain energy to relax the polymeric chains so you, so, so they need certain energy so those aspects are not there in when the theory was developed 1000 100 years ago so and then we developed a, a theory to support this thing uh, similar to the biological muscle giving back signal back to the brain our conducting polymer based artificial muscle does the same way as the biological muscle functions so in our uh, i'll just conclude in our group uh, in calicut university we started doing some experiment with different types of uh, polymers i i did not mention the polymer here i did not say any details of this uh, experiment but some result i show we are also getting exactly the same result uh, of uh, sensing back uh, property for conducting polymer based materials and then we did some kind of another uh, cooperative actuation uh, with a different uh, ionic concentration and we got a very wonderful result uh, we will be going to publish it uh, these are for some material some uh, and then we move to uh, different types of ions calcium ion sensing uh, is very important in biological uh, research then uh, different sodium ion potassium ion uh, different kinds of uh, ion sensing Uh, and then we try to correlate this result with the biological uh, process this is underway and then uh, we have uh, uh, we have made some kind of uh, supercapacitor uh, but here don't confuse that this is not a simultaneous sensing supercapacitor we were able to demonstrate the sensing property for a supercapacitor uh, so it's a sensing supercapacitor Uh, maybe for the first day, but exactly we can say sensing supercapacitor when we design the supercapacitor and show this its performance so that we haven't uh, reached that stage uh, and then uh, with this uh, words i conclude uh, thank you very much uh, my uh, we have five members in our research group uh, um, uh, lijin is uh, working with uh, indol based conducting polymers and then shabiba working with polypyrrole based conducting polymers and then uh, lijin is also working with iofin and then uh, sudika is working with uh, uh, polyanilin based conducting polymers so uh, we have got some some pretty good result uh, hopefully we will be able to publish in in some good journals this is our hope and uh, thank you very much thank you sir now the presentation is open for discussion are there industrial interests you know in india uh yeah yeah uh, because, you know if there is industries are now the industries are mainly focused in uh, japan and uh, uh, usa May, major artificial muscle industries are centered in japan and usa but as in our european network on artificial muscle they started in europe also but in india the they they started a, com, a, a collaboration because uh, spy, there is a group called electroactive polymer worldwide electroactive polymer group there are some groups working in india also i have seen in their website uh, nasa based uh, uh, spy society photonics and instrumentation engineer they have a subdivision called electroactive polymer actuators and devices they have worldwide network so they included india also as in their network so it's the experiments are in the embryo stage uh, japan and us has already seriously advanced in this uh, artificial muscle technology you But know i wanted to mention artificial muscle we are uh, nobody has started ex- working on pro- proprioceptive devices and tools i wanted to mention that um, you know recently there was some activity at qsat uh, uh, in neuronal activation uh, and in similar kind of materials uh, and they have in this right now some amount of industrial support because biologically neuronal activation is something of of interest in sports medicine and such things and there is also a similar uh, this has been very recently approved for funding as well and so it may be useful uh, to to have connect with uh, the team in qsat yes, Okay. Yeah. Maybe of uh, some utility because they have also uh, a team of doctors 
associated with this program to real uh, testing and validation. Yeah. That's all that I have, uh, Regine. From my side, it's over. Okay. Okay. If you don't have any more questions, let's conclude this session. By the way. Are there other questions in the chat box? I see something. Are there? Uh, uh, there's, uh, comments only. Comments only. Okay. What about durability of these artificial machines? Durability of durability of these art of these artificial muscles uh, depends on the material that you use. Conducting polymers can stay as long as you keep it in a proper atmosphere. Uh, it can stay even after two year, three year. It does not. Nothing will happen. There will be slight, very slight uh, degradation, but you can switch over to uh, the same level after uh, after mm -hmm. doping with the same uh, dopant material. Even if it goes to insulating state, you can revert back into conducting state. But uh, one more thing I forgot because our, my student, Lijin, uh, working on uh, polyindole, he found that uh, although conductivity is very important aspect for uh, applications of conducting polymer, but in this particular application, sensing, uh, simultaneous sensing behavior, uh, the conductivity of 10 to the power minus five is good enough. We got a very good result with a conducting polymer whose conductivity is 10 to the power minus five. Exactly the same type of uh, same type of uh, very good uh, cooperative activation behavior as we have observed by Lijin. Very good. Okay. No, I think we don't have any more questions. Let's thank Doctor here for his wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. The next session we start at one thirty, and before that, I have an announcement. Uh, for you, the, the selected posters are available for reading at the conference website www.efcs.in, and the same will be displayed during the lunch break in here in Zoom. Thank you. Next, so please assemble for next session at one thirty. Uh, same link. Uh...